All right, here we are at the Solar Edge booth with uh, Lior Handelsman. What is your current title, sir? I am a VP of Marketing and uh, Product Strategy. Okay, so we've had a couple of great conversations over the last year or so, right. talking about the evolution of the Solar Edge uh, product line. Right. A lot of exciting stuff's happening. Of course, Solar Edge is really the uh, the product that we're most familiar with in Hawaii, uh, and now there's this huge shift and we actually have your own battery system and right. you have this right. expanded capacity. Right. So we want to learn all about that. So uh, first of all, let's just talk about uh, where we're at right now. What's, what, what are the main kind of uh, updates? So first of all, storage is becoming bigger and uh, bigger, especially in the Hawaiian market with all the utility restriction on how much energy you want to feed. And our first product uh, in the market was this storage inverter which allows you to interact with an LG battery and then you can do your PV uh, uh, production, maximize your self-consumption, manage your energy uh, uh, in the home, and even go back up if you want to go back up uh, and back up some of the loads in your home. Yep. And this is our uh, running product being, as you said, sold pretty well in the Hawaiian market this and we have one, a lot of happy customers. This yes. is the one we're really familiar with. This exactly. is that, it was a 7,600 watt inverter. Exactly. That was the initial one that was launched, right? Exactly. And now we've seen some diversification of that product. Right, so, so first of all, we're literally these days bringing uh, this product uh, to the market. This is what we call the backup interface. Okay. And the backup interface works with the existing storage um, inverter to allow you for more backup fl flexibility. Right. So what is more backup uh, flexibility? Instead of pre-selecting the loads that will be the backup loads, uh -huh. you can now use this product in order to at least theoretically backup the whole home. Right. Of course, if you turn on all your power appliances at the home, this inverter will not be able to to deliver power to all the 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 to all your um, uh, appliances and needs, right. but you will have backup power everywhere in your home, in right. every socket and in every uh, and in every appliance. So this basically, the first thing it does, it basically allows you to get full home backup rather than selected, pre-selected loads. So the, the protected loads panel or the PLP, that's something that we're doing away with now. Exactly. This is something that replaces exactly. the need for that. Exactly. Okay, some the dynamism. Yeah. yeah. The second thing uh, it does, which is mostly good news for the installer, that it streamlines the, the installation. Instead of installing a meter, yeah. wiring it back to the inverter, installing an auto transformer and wiring it back to the inverter, it's all in here. Nice. So you install one box, and, the, and, and this box has the meter. It already measures your uh, your uh, your needed uh, uh, production consumption. Right. It has the the auto transformer. It has a main breaker. It has everything you need in order okay. to do. Of course, it has the auto transfer switch. Yep. So it has everything you need in order to to back up your home. So so you need this, the the inverter, and and of course a battery. So it's gotten a lot cleaner, the installation's gotten a lot simpler, yes. and taking yes. less time, yes. lowering cost yes. of install, which exactly. is really important, exactly. right? Now, later down the road, and pretty much soon later down the road, uh, we are phasing out this inverter, which is still an inverter from our old, uh, uh, um, I wouldn't say old, but older generation technology. We installed many of these inverters. Exactly, and we're, phasing, and we're phasing to this inverter. Okay, so, so this is the new gen. Exactly, this is the new storage um, uh, inverter coming soon, very soon actually. It's an HD wave uh, um, inverter, it can go up to 11.4. So in, in that exact package, that, so that the, size is the, a little the bigger? The 11.4 is a little bit bigger, something like but this. not much, really small. Not much, right? yeah, so that is HD wave technology. Right. And this will be our uh, storage uh, inverter instead of this one. And this and this, they work, they work together in order to bring you back up to the home. Right. The nice thing here about this inverter is that you can install that even without a battery and without a backup interface, right. and you can later on add battery right. and later on add backup interface. Nice. So you can sell PV today and add storage later. That's in some markets, in some markets, it has real value. In the wine market, I think that 
pretty much everything goes right. with backup. Right. And, and now it's always a good it's always a good uh, back like it's a good backup in the sales process. Right. Because exactly. you're going in there exactly. saying, hey, let's buy, let's do this whole exactly. thing. Exactly. I'm not quite ready for batteries. Okay, well you can do it later. Exactly. The second thing is that with this inverter, you can actually install three of these inverters wow. on one backup interface. Wow. So, so you, you don't have to multiply that. You don't have to multiply that. You can go up and up in, uh, in, uh, in uh, PV capacity yep. and in backup power. Every one of these inverters can have two separate batteries. So you can have three uh, 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 of these with one backup interface for bigger homes and bigger connection. Yep. Okay. So three up to 11 for 11.4 right. kilowatt uh, a, a inverters. That gives us a tremendous amount of capacity on the residential space. Really, you, you, very rarely would you need more than that. I agree. Residential. I agree. I do know a couple, <laughs> but, 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 no, but yeah, generally but, uh, speaking, that's about as big as you possibly need. Yeah. I'm not sure that you know backup is not something you do not want to backup everything all the time. Right. But yes, uh, if if you have a big service and you want to have a lot of backup, yeah. you can install three of these. They can each have their own part of the solar array. They can each have their own battery or batteries. Right. And you can have all of that with full home backup through this product. Nice and clean, very compact. Exactly. Small, compact, less boxes on the wall. Everything yeah. integrated uh, together. Less steps for the, for the installers. Less training needed. It's there a nice product. All good stuff. So you're standing in front of the uh, the kind of showpiece, the really exciting piece of the whole puzzle here. Right. There's been some uh, shifts to your business. You've, you've acquired a new company. Tell us about how this incorporates into the uh, product. So the more storage is becoming a bigger part of solar, the more we realize that storage and solar are going to be the same thing, right? So we are all becoming, the solar industry is becoming the grid. Yeah. It's going to take time. But over time, solar energy is cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And because of the intermittent nature of solar energy, you have to have storage and energy management. And our inverters are already doing that. But uh, we feel that we need to have more ownership of the storage part of the, of the equation, more understanding, more access and control and integration. So showing here, uh, first time in the US, our Residential battery, it's a 10 kilowatt hour, 5 kilowatt peak residential battery. That too has a lot of uh, uh, interesting features. The first of them being that the, the only thing you need to, it's literally plug and play. You plug this battery, DC plus, DC minus to the, to the inverter, and that's it. Exactly. No need for communication wiring, no need for anything like that. The inverter detects a battery and it becomes a storage system. Over the same wire. Over the same wire. No need for a communication cabling, no need for special configuration. The inverter detects that there's a battery in the battery port, establishes communication to it without the need of uh, any wiring, and you have a, a battery system. Because a lot of the feedback that we get from our customers is that they want the installation to be faster and more yeah. streamlined. Sure. Yeah. Second, we have very, very good NMC cells uh, in this battery, so to say a little bit about the yeah, uh, lithium ion technologies that the two dominant technologies in the market are the NMC type of uh, lithium ion this is the same technology that you find in your phone same lithium ion t uh, technology that you find in uh, electric vehicles yep. and they are the LFP batteries uh, lithium ferrite batteries these batteries are they're pretty much for the same capacity you would probably get double the weight and the 30 percent or 40 percent bigger size um, physical, we, physical, physical size, size physical yeah physical size. size we we believe that nmc is the right technology to use in uh, ess this is the technology that sits on the faster evolution curve why because it goes into phones and cars and like everything like solar modules like Pretty much everything, volume drives uh, evolution, dro volume drives price, volume dr drives uh, performance. And when you're sitting on that very fast curve of uh, volume growth because of EVs and mobile devices, NMC is, in our view, the winning uh, technology. It is actually the technology that you can find in most storage systems uh, um, today, even though you can still find LF. Um, LFP with some vendors. So that's an NMC battery. It's um, 
through 10 kilowatt hour, meaning that the battery, when it's fully depleted, you've actually been able to take 10 kilowatt hours out um, of the battery. It has excellent energy throughput. So the, the term we all need to start discussing is energy throughput. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not kilowatt hour, not number um, uh, of cycles, not capacity at end of life, energy throughput. How much energy can you put in and out of a battery? C rating. C, C rating is how much power versus capacity you can take out of the battery. Energy throughput is in 10 years. How many megawatt hours of energy you can take out of one battery? It's an interesting concept. That's the most important uh, metric. It, energy throughput is an interesting concept because I, I noticed that some of the warranties are migrating to that language, exactly. energy throughput. So it's really about how much, I mean, because what we're doing is there's all these different metrics in there to start to describe batteries, but energy throughput is kind of the, the, main, the main one right. that says, well, what am I looking for? I'm looking for energy out of this system. I'll explain to you why. Totality, how do yeah. I get it? So, so take for a example, number of cycles. I tell you, this is a 10 kilowatt hour battery and you can do, I don't know, 5,000 cycles. But after 5,000 cycles, what's the, because batteries uh, degrade, so after 5,000 cycles, what's the battery capacity? Right. How much energy can you actually take in and out of the battery after 5,000 cycles? So you always come back to energy throughput. Because 5,000 cycles, that's the end of life. But right. And the battery degrades a little bit over its, it's lifetime. It's no longer a 10 kilowatt hour battery. <laughs> yes, yes. So the important measure is energy throughput. Okay. You buy a battery, how, ma how many megawatt hours can you take out of this battery over its uh, lifetime? And we believe that the prevailing factors that will stay is energy throughput and energy throughput per, per dollar. Right. Energy throughput, energy throughput per dollar. It's interesting too because even for two self-professed energy geeks, we don't think in terms of energy throughput right. today. Right. Yeah. And certainly, certainly not over the lifetime. Uh, yeah, and our installers probably don't in our in our, our yeah, plan, yeah. If you have initial don't. capacity, you have maximum power, mm -hmm. which by the way, these two numbers they determine the C rate. The C -rate. But how much energy can you actually take out of the battery over its lifetime? Yeah. That's very important because if yeah. you bought a battery, you want it to work effectively for the lifetime of the system. Of course. So if, if a vendor tells you, here's a 10-year battery and the energy throughput is, let's say, 10 megawatt hours, and another vendor tells you, here's, a, here's another 10 kilowatt hour, 10-year battery, and the energy throughput is 9 megawatt hours, Essentially, this means you will get less energy, 10% less energy over your lifetime from that battery. It's yeah. an interesting yeah. point because it requires a little bit of education for the, uh, the, 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 the consumers that I are agree. purchasing it, right? There's this, we use this term asymmetry. The people, the people selling it, Nobody, nobody's thinking in those terms. Right, so there's a uh, manufacturer the, to <laughs> installer exactly, to consumer. Exactly, as you said, the market is shifting to this language. Yeah, and it'll be, um, that, that will be very helpful in, in, in kind of uh, alleviating that asymmetry of information between right. you know the manufacturers of this equipment and then everyone else down the chain. Right. So very exciting stuff. Okay, well, energy throughput could get us into a big conversation, but let's let's talk about maybe that will be the future in the next two years or something, where when a, when a salesman comes in, then you're able to really determine apples for apples what you're right. getting. Sure. That would be beautiful. Yeah. But what this system in and of itself here, very exciting system. It's compact. It's simple. You're lowering your uh, your labor and your install costs and complexities. Um, this I understand. Clean can, and white on your uh, facade of I your home. That. Yeah. You don't get these bullets on the product no. when you oh, buy yeah. it. Unless you want them, right? <laughs> so are these are all outdoor rated products or indoor everything rated Everything is outdoor rated. That's it. Everything kinda, is outdoor. I said that not knowing the answer, kind of confident outdoor that it would be a yes. Outdoor rated, these, these batteries can be wall mounted, they can be floor mounted. Right, oh. right. Uh, uh, because in some cases you don't have the right strong wall so to hang this battery. Actual weight. Okay. It's around, so sorry for not thinking in pounds, I no, think in right. kilos. It's, yeah. it's, it's around 100 kilos. Okay. 220-ish pounds, yeah. right? So, okay, okay, very cool stuff. Um, so we're talking about uh, load controls as well. So there must be some robust software with this system. Is right. that all incorporated into an app, or how is it? Yeah, how does so, the consumer see it? How does the homeowner see so it? So everyone that already buys a solar system knows that, they, that the homeowner and the installer, they get an app. In that app, the homeowner sees the rate of self-consumption, how much the, uh, the, the real-time status of the power production, battery status, system status, how much energy is fed into the grid and when, if even allowed, 
Uh, they see the, the, the behavior of the home consumption, so they see home consumption, solar generation, consumption that is being offset right. by, the, by the backup system. We keep on rolling new features, so we are soon to roll a feature uh, uh, for uh, backup, so the homeowner can select real time how much energy he wants to preserve in the, uh, in the battery for a backup event. If you have a weather uh, event and you want to increase that level so you'll have more backup power, all that, all that you can do that. It's all uh, in one app that the homeowner has. Okay, okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here. Um, one thing I do want to ask about is the, uh, this year, the ability to change and determine your, uh, your, your backed up loads, right. is that something that's controlled? How is that controlled or selected? Is that- No, is so, that so every outlet and appliance in your home gets backup power. You have to decide manually which of them you turn on and off. Yep. We are launching in the US market next year an addition to this system that has home energy automation. So smart sockets, smart switches, a, a smart hot water a electric heater. That, and this allows you to even further increase your level of self-consumption. So the system will automatically can turn on your pool pump whenever there is available energy. So let's say that you have available energy, you can put it in the battery. So we will, so we will turn on automatically your pool pump or your hot water heater. And with that, it will give you more control over these energy appliances from the app. You can actually control them from the app. You can set timers. It learns your behavior. So if you always need hot water at a certain hour in the day, it will make sure that you have hot water um, at that time by trying to mostly take that energy out of a, a free PV that you have stored, it will automatically control your EV charger also. So it's evolving because solar systems are evolving. Solar systems are gonna be one with the grid. Yeah, and you said something really interesting there. You said smart sockets. So beyond breaker level control, you're going exactly. right for the outlets. Right for the outlet, yeah. Nice. Gives you more flexibility, more ability to maybe shift and add later on, even without an electrician. In some, uh, yeah. in some case, with our smart plug, it's all coming. It's you can see that all here. We're going to start moving, moving in that direction. That's, if you want. That's our smart energy hot water. Ooh, camera's moving. So, at those smart plugs that you described, that's taking you beyond even the more granular level of the uh, of the, the controller over here, right? You're right. Just getting right. to the point where you can actually control devices. Mm -hmm. And are those all going to be branded Solar Edge? Is that your game plan? They're all right here, all right, right in front so of us. So now we're all right, now we're here. So, so here's our smart switch, our, our smart uh, hot water energy uh, controller, yeah. smart socket. Yes, so we, it okay. takes us into the home. We are not trying to compete with uh, energy uh, automation companies, right? Right. This integrates with Alexa, this yeah. integrates with Google. You could go and say, hey Google, what's my rate of self-consumption? Yep. And, and, and you will get that, or hey Alexa, turn on my hot water uh, uh, heater, and you will get that uh, done. We are trying to manage the energy part of your home. Right. And that is critical for solar systems because that's the next phase in solar systems for the solar inverter to become the energy manager of storage, of devices, of everything. Very of exciting. charger, everything. Very, very exciting stuff. So we're going to have to break these down one by one. If you have the time, if you don't let us sure. know. But so for the smart energy hot water. So one thing about hot water is it's generally one of the, if not the largest load in the home, right? Right. So you've got, and, and, you're, you, and you, you need it. It's a really critical one. So how is this operating? Are we looking at this from a self-supply functionality and moving PV when we can't consume it or exactly. put it in the batteries exactly into that. the hot water? Exactly and that. is this happening via, um, what kind of controls? I mean, how so is the basic So this is all sauce? wireless. Wireless communication. This sits on the AC feed to Wireless. the hot water heater. So you don't have to run any weird wires all the way to the other side of the house. Exactly. You you place this on the AC feed of the of the hot water heater. Right. And this is a linear controller, meaning that if you have excess of 2.2 kilowatts in your PV system, yeah. We will run exactly this amount of power into your hot water heater. Very important. Yeah, so it's not an on-off controller right. that you now have two kilowatt excess and we need to make a, 
a hard choice, do we turn on the five kilowatt hot water heater, yes or no? Very interesting, because it just, just it, what's neat about that is that if you're trying to optimize self-consumption and you have a certain amount available at a given time, just for our listeners and our, and our watchers here, that if you had to, if it was an on-off, you might not be able to fully optimize all the time, exactly. right? Exactly. That's why it's linear, exactly. right? So this is linear. The rest, these two sockets are uh, on-off uh, switches that you can connect to large energy uh, devices. Mm -hmm. You can put them on your lighting also, and you can, right. and this gives you the ability to control your lights from your phone. Uh -huh. But that's not the main energy use. The main right. energy use is to put these for your heavy uh, electricity guzzlers. Right. It can be on your heat pump, it can be on your uh, pool pump, it can be on anything that takes a lot of power. And then the system will try to maximize self-consumption, taking these loads into account. Right, and these are, this may be a silly question, Jay may laugh at me for asking this, but what's the communication like on these smart energy Wireless, sockets? everything is wireless. Is it is it over power line or is it wireless no, it, over? It is wireless. Uh, wireless, properly wireless. Mesh wireless, yes. Okay, because it's plugged into a <laughs> socket, right? So. Very interesting. So we got here a smart energy switch relay. Yeah. What, what is this exactly? I don't understand. How does this function? It's basically an on-off switch okay. that is uh, smartly controlled by the inverter. Mm -hmm. And this is, the socket is same. It's an on-off switch, only okay. it's flexible and you can move it around the home. Okay. And you so don't need like an electrician to, to, uh, to do the, the installation. Right. The other big load is your EV charger. Right. The okay, other wow. big load is your EV charger. Another so, Solar Edge logo. So another, another <laughs> right Solar Edge there. logo, the, the Solar Edge EV charger, it goes into the same monitoring system. You see your EV charger, you can control your EV charger. Unbelievable. And this is linear also. So if you have excess power, we can run just that excess power into your car. Wow. Now, uh, for our listeners, this the EV charger was an exciting thing when it came out because you had some really unique features. You right. had one of the most powerful Solar level two yeah. chargers, I think it like... That uh, can go up to 40 amps. Because you could do all your solar plus the grid at the exactly. same time if you exactly. wanted to. You Maximum also, feed from the grid plus solar or battery power. Very interesting technology. Yeah. Also, you had, I think, some features to be able to go just from solar if you wanted to right. drive on right. sunshine. Exactly. So you kind of really cater into the needs of, of people that are you know buying these cars and then buying these solar systems. It's kind of amazing how far the reach has gone at this stage. Is this here, is that go between like a socket and a and the device? Like, yeah. okay, I got you. Wow, very cool. So um, we've covered most of these things. Um, what do we got here real fast? That's a cellular energy meter. In some cases, we have installers that don't want to sell a solar system or can sell um, a solar system. So right. the basic thing they sell to a customer is an energy meter. So the customer is already on our monitoring ah. platform. He sees his... Well, let's at least do a, a, a meter, he right? He sees <laughs> his consumption. Yeah. Later on, when you can then add a solar yeah. system, and this ties into the same system as one. Well, we're in a really great location here, Lior. I know we got to wrap this up, yeah. but it kind of coming full circle to your power optimizers. This is what started the whole story, really, right? Yeah, so so the, the, the key innovation when we started SolarEdge was the power optimizer. And we... From the very beginning, we sold optimizers plus inverter plus monitoring as one system. That was our first offering to the market. The key innovation, the key unique thing about that offering was our power optimizer. Module level power electronics, more energy from every panel, safety at the panel level, which is now standard uh, in the US. When we started, it was uh, unheard of. Monitoring at the, at the panel level, easier rooftop uh, installation and system design, less cabling. This was the beginning of SolarEdge was our optimized inverter system. I think it's really great that we end on that note. And I want to uh, just tell you from a personal perspective, you know, uh, to start out with that value proposition and then to build out as far as you have is a miraculous kind of accomplishment over the course of a decade? I don't know, that long? Uh, so we, we started the company in 2006. We started selling in 2009. So 10 years of sales and three years of R&D. Yep. Um, first of all, it's the only way to keep growing and become and remain competitive. Innovate. The core value in SolarEdge is innovation. So the, the only you cannot just bring a solution to the market and stay with it. You have to keep innovating. Second of all, this is the future of solar systems. This is the way solar will become the the, the, the dominant energy source. 
if inverters can do more than just generate power and feed it into the grid. So we are doing that because we feel that's the future uh, of the industry. So innovation is key for, for staying competitive. In, in, uh, innovation is key for the solar industry to grow. Personally, for me, it's also fun. It is I fun. like inventing products. It is fun. Well, thank you very much for all the hard work and for making the kind of vision and imagination of everyone out there. We saw these ideas. We didn't know how to do it. You told us how to do it. So Thank you very much. Thank you for thank all you. the hard work, really. Bye-bye.